I'm Cynthia James, and this network is about changing lives one woman at a time. Welcome to Women Awakening. I'm your host, Cynthia James, and, you know, I love doing this podcast because I get to connect with powerful women all over the world who have a passion for what they do. I mean, they're really change makers, but what makes it so fabulous is they are, they're just ordinary women like you and me, but they've decided to step into their field of power to step into the place where they get to bring their gifts to the planet and inspire the rest of us. So we do these every week. We're on uh, Spotify, iTunes, iHeart, Spreaker, Amazon. We're on video, uh, YouTube. Subscribe, share the videos, tell other women. You know, I guarantee you, you know, we've been doing this now for three years, you know, women all over the world. There has not been one woman that I haven't walked away with an aha moment. So I'm really grateful that you're here. Uh, My guest today is someone I've known for a while, and her name is Alex Marku. She's a multi-award winning author of visionary fiction and spirituality books. She considers herself a truth seeker as she's always sought truths hidden from humanity and woven them into her work, whether writing suspense or spiritual books. So since 2011, She has been on a journey learning about sacred mysteries and magic of autism and its relationship to humanity's spiritual evolution. Whoa, can't wait to talk about that. (laughs) And many of these truths in her book, um, uh, in her new book, Gods in the Game, Messages of the Awakening and Consciousness Shift, Destination New Earth, a blue planet, a blue, I'm sorry, a blueprint to 5D consciousness and the unexpected heroes, a visionary novel. So she's written seven books. Can't wait for you to meet her. Hi, Alex. Well, hi, Cynthia. Thank you so much for the invitation. I really appreciate being here. Well, I love you. And I remember you sitting in my office uh, a number of years ago, Mm -hmm. sharing about your first book, And I remember reading that book and thinking, oh, wow, this woman has a gift because it was a story, but it had magic in it. And I think all of your books have that. So I want to know where you were born and how you grew up. Where I was born, I was born in Lemonster, Massachusetts, and I was the middle child of uh, two brothers. And um, my parents were, uh, my father was a barber, my mom was a bookkeeper. So, uh, you know, I was raised by, I guess, tradespeople, and um, we were very Catholic. Uh, Our family was very deep rooted in the traditions. And there actually is an interesting story about that because I I went to parochial school, um, actually twice. I went to elementary school and I went to a parochial uh, high school and I wasn't successful in both of them. And I was told when I was in high school, it was my attitude. But what I'll always remember is a story of, in the fourth grade and in uh, Sister Clara's class when I was in religion. And um, I was asked to stand in front of the entire class. And in the fourth grade, that for me, that was kind of nerve wracking because my sis- my teacher never did that before. And I didn't know what she was going to do, but she started drilling me on questions, questions about religion. And um I was really surprised. I knew the stuff and I just kept saying, giving a right answer after a right answer. And then the, the, uh, the, the sister asked a question. She said, well, who betrayed Jesus? And I said, well, well, that was Peter. And she smiled and she, she says, well, you're wrong. It was Judas. And I said, well, no, Judas was, Jesus's best friend. And, um, 
and I got really nervous and we had some words and I heard two words escape her lips. She said, dumb Marku. And those words stayed with me. And I went home and I vowed never to be called a dumb Marku again. But what I realized was when we're, when, when I was in parochial, when I was in school, I was, you know, you're taught things and some things have resonance and they resonate as truth. And some things to me just, they were flat. And so those things never resonated as truth. But what I learned is, unfortunately, as a student, is when I gave them the answers they wanted to hear, I got good grades. But when <laughs> I spoke from my heart, I was told I was um, a dumb Marku. <laughs> So anyway, that resonance, that um, I call that like a skill I have. I've learned that when I hear things, if they're true, they have resonance. So I took that into my adult life and all those things that I was told as a child I was crazy about, I've explored in um, my fiction and, and also in my new work and my nonfiction books. Yeah, well, you know what's so interesting about this is that so many of the artists of which I consider you to be one um, came and were the, um, I want to say they, they prickly, they created prickly situations with people because that thing you said about understanding truth mm -hmm. and being able to differentiate between truth and lies and then question it is what made you a seeker. It's what made you a researcher. And it's what made you, you know, someone who wanted to bring truth to the planet. Mm -hmm. So I love that. So um, I want to I want to just ask you, you know, were you writing when you were young? I wasn't actually because I, you know, the things that they force you to think about like, you know, religion and history, those classes where you really had to put some really deep thought and, and, and writing, you know, it's the same thing you're thinking. Well, those classes I didn't excel in. What, what I excelled in were the maths and the sciences. Wow. And I ended up going that route. I ended up becoming a scientist. Oh, that's so interesting. Okay. So tell me the bridge between science and becoming an author. A bridge. Uh, that was my, a spiritual awakening I had in the 90s. Oh. You know? Yeah, I, uh, I, um, I had an out-of-body experience. And my world, uh, uh, my religious world, uh, that, it was shattered. It was, I was like, well, one minute, this is not what I was told. You know, and uh, and so that was the bridge. That was the bridge. I went from the sciences and I started exploring more of this uh, creative creative side. And I started writing. I had a story in my head and I couldn't get rid of it. And the only way I I realized I could get rid of it was to write it. And I never thought in a million years that anyone would have taken it. I think the book you were talking about. Cynthia, it was uh, my third book. Oh, was it? <laughs> yeah, it was my third book, and um, and but but that first book was pretty bad, uh, and but for some reason I followed the universe's signs, and the very first publisher I pitched, they bought it, and uh, and they and they asked for more, <laughs> so uh, yeah, so it was. I, that's when I started learning about following the signs. And yeah, well, I want to talk more about that because, you know, so many people are like, well, I don't know if it's my intuition or if my head is in there or if I'm being guided. How do you know what the, to follow the signs? How do you know it's a sign to guide you to a, a new place? Well, I, you know... You know, I did go on a journey, and and thank you very much, Cynthia. You gave me a review on my, I think it was my fourth book, Life Signs, which is about the signs. 
how do I know about the science? You know, I had this because I was a scientist. I came up with these packs. Well, if I have three signs for this, um, it will mean that's a sign. <laughs> You know, so I made these packs with myself and I realized the more I worked with the signs, the more they came. And and I think that's how my intuition grew, uh, because I started trusting myself. Yes. And because, yes, the universe wants us to follow those signs. And we delve into it in the new newest book uh, more because it has to do with our divine blueprint. The universe wants us to uh, be successful, wants us to express our higher self, wants us to express that divine blueprint. And, you know, when we're heading towards that divine blueprint, we um, we do. We have ease and grace and we have signs and life is very cool. And when we're not, well, um, that's when you uh, might have some course corrections and uh, life gets very interesting, it, your word, of course. Um, and uh, yeah, we can have conflict because the universe or a higher self wants us to move toward that expression of our higher self. Yeah, so, so talk to me about the process of letting this book come through. You know, um, because your first, was it four books were, were fiction? Were, were, I mean, we're. I do, yeah. Okay. I do have four novels. Okay. And um, I do have three nonfiction spirituality books. Yeah. yeah. So this, so tell, talk to me about how this, this last one came through. Tell me the name again. The, sl the new one, it just came out this week. It's called Gods in the Game. Mm. messages on the awakening and consciousness shift. And, you know, uh, essentially I am still working on my path of trying to spread truths. And uh, I have been working on the last three books. Um, I've been very blessed to uh, come into the presence of what you would call these autistics and, um, and also a psychic medium. And her name is uh, Shauna Kalicki. And between uh, working with these autistics, which are not, uh, and they're they're um, they're high dimen higher dimensional, higher vibrational beings. Uh, they are not what you would think of. And I, I, it is my belief that all autistics are the have this higher vibrational. They're here for a reason. And they're working on the uh, consciousness shift and the planet. And the three that I work with, uh, they are nonverbal, um, considered on the low end of the spectrum. Or is it the high end? They're low functioning and they're considered on the low end of the, the high end of the spectrum. Uh, but I work with these beings as well as this medium to talk with these beings as well as the masters. Um, I, we work with Mother Mary primarily for this book, as well as a collective consciousness uh, from the 16th dimension, and that's called Syrian. So what we've done is we've taken my curiosity as well as taken the direction of one of these autistics. His name is Daniel. And I work with Daniel as well as his mother and Shauna. And we try to tackle those questions about what's happening on the planet. Because when you look around, you know something's going on. And um, that's what we're doing. That's what the book is about. It's messages from the masters. I call them masters. They are the autists. They are the ascended masters. They are uh, this uh 16th dimensional collective and uh we're just we're, we're trying to let people know what's really happening on the planet and well, i oh i'm I, sorry no 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 please well i what's really interesting to me 
is, is that I'm so glad that you did this because there are a few people in my life who've been, you know, they're high functioning people, but at later points in their life, they, they've been diagnosed as being on the spectrum, which has been an aha, aha for them yeah. that they weren't crazy and they didn't have to fight to, to, to regulate and all that other kind of stuff. And so, so what's interesting about this is, is like what maybe your book is a portal for all of these people on the spectrum to understand the gifts that they bring as opposed to the judgment that they receive from the mm-hmm. culture. Oh, absolutely, Cynthia. Um, and, and yes, it, and, you know, the both books, the last two books, um, one of them was called is called Destination New Earth, and the other is Gods in the Game. In both these books, we do talk about the different types of autists that are on the planet. You know, the the ones that, you know, society looks at, they shake their head, they shake their head and they go, oh, my God, no one's home to um, those that are considered to have Asperger's and they're high functioning and those in between. They all have different roles. They're all there for a reason. And some of them know it. And it's beautiful when they know it because they know their life has purpose. Some of them have woken up because people in their life look at them and they realize that they're more than this empty shell and they're uh, they're more than uh, an autistic uh, and they wake up and their life is uh, you know much more joyful than what it was before they woke up yeah so who do you want to read this book you know I would love everyone to read it because but not everybody's ready for it. And I'll be the first uh, to say that. I think I'd love everyone to read uh, one of the books. It's uh, well, it's The Unsuspected Heroes. And I <clears throat> don't think if that will show up, but um, The Unsuspected Heroes is it's a novel and it's going to hit the reader where they're at. <clears throat> if they believe in um, the woo woo stuff in the world, they'll get it. If they don't, it's going to be a story to them. And that's a beautiful thing. And it will plant seeds. And one day those seeds might may sprout. And one day they might not. And it's okay. Um, but for the last two books, and let me please, I know I probably shouldn't do But you're going to be, on, it's okay, you're going to be on YouTube. So, so oh, the people, yeah, the people who are on YouTube will yes. see it. So hold them up again. Okay. So yes, one's this is the new one. God's, God's in the game. game. And mm-hmm. this is the um, Destination New Earth. Great. And uh, the new one expands on the concepts that we introduced in um, Destination New Earth. So it is a standalone book. Mm-hmm. Uh, but who, whoever is on a spiritual path, not a newbie to the path, the newbie should check out the unsuspected heroes. Oh, okay. Uh, someone who's been on the path and they've been working on their awakening uh, and or they have awakened, the, this book is for them. Well, you know, this is so interesting. I, I just want to ask for you personally. I mean, clearly, um, you know, there's energy that comes through you. That's how you write. But how have you experienced being on the planet as you? Uh, how have I experienced as me, mm-hmm. as Alex? Mm-hmm. Uh, are you talking about like the things that are happening on the planet today? Or you, my, my life is actually um, quite lovely. Uh, I, I live in, um, I'm a hermit. <laughs> I don't go out much. I um, I love life. I try to commune with nature. Um, I have a beautiful son who's getting married. And, you know, life is good for me. And, you know, I've been told by the um, higher dimensional masters, the masters, if it's not knocking on my door, Alex, don't, uh, don't, you know, don't worry about it. 
Right. And that's how I live my life. Well, I ask because usually people who are have the, the level of evolution that you have and the level of seeking that you have, you know, um, sometimes they find it difficult to be in, in the culture because people don't get them or don't understand. Did you ever go through a phase like that? Oh, every day. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, I see people phase in and out of my life because, you know, I have uh, friends from many, many years ago that I'm sure they look at me and they don't get me. And 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 that's OK. I, you know, I love them and, um, you know, but they come in my out of my life. And um, it's, uh, you know, yes, I'll be the first to admit that. Um, my life is probably different than what most people would think. Most people, um, they seem to think that, you know, authors are, uh, you know, have these exciting lives and they get out and they do things. And um, I just like to be. I uh, spend time in nature with my cat and um, I love to read and learn. And, oh, I do have a business, a full-time business, too, that I have to do to pay the bills, to bring these books to market, right? What's your business? I, uh, I, I'm a writer. <laughs> <laughs> it pays more to write for other people, right? No, but my passion is to write for the world. Um, but no, I'm a writer. I write web content. I do search engine optimization for, for businesses. Well, I love this. And, and I want to go back for just a moment. Now, seven books. Seven books. Let's talk about launching a book. Because I'm sure there's people out there who want to be authors and who have a big vision of what it's going to look like when they write these books. Mm -hmm. What have you learned about writing and launching books? Okay. I love to write. That's what I've learned. Um I don't mind, uh, and I'm also the publisher of my last four books. I don't mind producing the book, but even though I do marketing for a living, I hate to market my books. Um, yeah, I despise it. And if you want to write a book and bring it to market, you have to plan on, that's, that's a full-time job promoting a book and it's the hardest part of the job these type of situations for me are uh, really very challenging for me to come and sit and and talk to people talk to you you make it easy since Cynthia because I know you and I don't think you're going to throw me under the bus but <laughs> but there are those interviewers that will be the first to do that but anyway so for writers if you know, writing is a beautiful thing and it's connecting with your higher self. And if you're called to do it, oh my God, do it. It is a beautiful experience. The writing process, the creation of a, a book, that is, you are a creator, right? Yes. And uh, it's beautiful. If you like to get out and talk to people and promote, you'll be very successful. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a journey for me because uh, I've written five books and I don't I, I think I was in fantasy land, the first book. And I just thought it was going to just I was going to meet the right people. It was going to go to, you know, I don't know. Yeah. I, it, it was it was interesting. But I wanted you to talk about that because because anybody who's listening, if you want to write a book, if something wants to come through, you trust it. Mm -hmm. And the marketing for anybody is not the easiest or the funnest part. Right. But getting your message out in the world is important. So Alex, how do people find you? How do they get your new book? Sure. Well, I do have a website and it's my name. It's Alex Marcou. It's spelled M-A-R-C-O-U-X uh, dot com. And uh, yes, you can go there. If you're interested, sign up for my newsletter. I don't do very many. Um, and, uh, if my books are available, uh, obviously on amazon.com as well as the large, a lot of, um, online bookstores, 
what I would ask is if anybody's interested, please go to your favorite either bookstore or online source, wherever you normally would buy your book. And even if they don't have it, ask them to bring it in because it won't get into the stores if uh, people don't go in and ask for it. Uh, but it is available on Amazon. And um, I think that's how you can. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> ladies, what I want to say to you is <clears throat> um, there's something about Alex that taps into magic, whether it's the novels or whether it's the nonfiction books. <clears throat> and I think as an author, as a person who a public figure reading other people's work and getting and to understand the gifts that they bring assists you in bringing uh, being a, a more powerful artist. So Alex, I asked the same last question to everybody on my show. This show is called women awakening. What do you think is the most important thing about women awakening on the planet in this moment? Oh, that they realize how important they are to this planetary shift in consciousness and that their awakening matters. It isn't that it's when one person awakens, they not only affect themselves, they affect all those around them as well as all those, um, uh, the world. And if you take a look at the world today, take, uh, things are pretty crazy. Um, <laughs> it's, it's chaotic. Uh, our futures seem to be uncertain and um oh boy i you know it's it can be scary and and that might be true but it also can be glorious and magnificent and miraculous and i believe where you focus your attention you're creating your reality um you know humanity is currently facing something it's never faced before it's uh, not at this scale. We're facing the possibility and probability of shifting, collectively shifting a consciousness. And, um, you know, I say possibility because it isn't a done deal. And what is important and what we need to do, more of humanity needs to awaken. And the, the messages that we received for this new book is that uh, the awakening, uh, we need to reach a higher level of awakening in order to jumpstart this collective awakening. You know, you say, well, what higher level? Um, it's important that people realize that they are energetic expressions. They are energetic conduits and they can work with that energy. Uh, that they're creators and they're sovereign and they get to choose not to be influenced by others and to work toward that divine blueprint, that expression of their soul, that authentic self. And, you know, uh, one of the tips we give in the new book, and I can, I'm hoping I can share it here, it's, it is for you know, the master shared to treat your life like a compass and know that your divine blueprint is true north. And when you're navigating toward your divine blueprint, your life flows with ease and grace. It just flows. It's smooth sailing. But when, you know, you take a look at your life and you have stagnation or you have challenges or you have interference, you know, um, it is possible. It's essential. You're not heading towards your divine blueprint, the expression of who you really are. And, um, you know, you know, we, we as a society, we have this habit of essentially, um, what is it? It's what's the phrase? It's when uh, the going gets tough, the tough get going. Right. And you know, that works for to some extent, but if your life is full of conflict, full of a struggle, I would really take a look at that. Go inside and sort out, is this a test of persistence or is the universe sending you a message? You know, what I want you to know is you're important 
And your awakening really matters with sovereignty. And, you know, it's the best gift you can give, not your, only yourself and your family, but the entire world. Thank you. That's so beautiful, Alex. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for being here. Congratulations on your son getting married and on your new book launching. Mm -hmm. um, ladies, I hope that you will um, go and get her book and go to check out her website. I mean, um, she is an inspiration. Thank so you. this is what, how I, you're welcome, darling. I'm really glad you're here. I, ladies, I always end the show the same way. And I love what Alex just said, you know, your awakening is important. What you plant in this universe raises the frequency, not only for you, but for the entire planet. So what I want to say is don't sit, don't wait, don't run, don't hide, stand up in the truth of who you are and follow that true north so that your blueprint can unfold. Thank you so much for being here. I love you and I'll see you next time. <laughs>